I'm scared. Suppose he don't like me. Suppose I don't go over. Well, if he's that big a dope, you don't want to work for him anyhow. How do I look? Like you always look. Just a little bit better than perfect. <laughs> Thank you, boys. We'll let you know later. Uh-uh, no class. Not for a Hartman show. All right, what's next? Next act, please. That's me? Yeah. No. Wait a minute, hon. Don't you want to make with the good luck? Oh, I'm so nervous, I almost forgot. Gesundheit. Hey, Your name is? Mary Elizabeth Carroll, sir. They call me Maybeth for short. Any experience? Oh, yes. Uh, after every show our church club gave, the Ridgefield Clarion, that's our local newspaper, they always said I'm that I'm quite I... sure they did. Uh, let's hear your song, please. Somebody's walking in my dreams That's why I'm talking in my dreams Someone keeps butting in when I start counting sheep Someone keeps cutting in and cutting off my sleep Recognize gives off those confidential signs. I may be crazy, but as crazy as it seems, somebody's walking in my dream, and it's you, dear. Another chorus and pick up the tempo. Into you. What's the idea of interrupting the singer? Don't you know who that is, boss? That's Dollface Carol from the Gaiety Burlesque on 14th Street. You must have heard about her. Dollface Carol? Sure. She's the reason why the temperature downtown is 10 degrees higher than uptown. That's right. You know what happens when she goes into her act? The air conditioning goes haywire. It can't compete with her. All right, wise guys, you made your point. Oh, Mike, we might have known this would happen. Okay, so she's Dollface Carol and she works in Burlicue. What difference does that make? She's not just a stripper, she's a personality. Why, in her field, she's tops. And just who are you? Hannigan's the name. Michael Francis Hannigan. I own that show down at the Gaiety. I run it and I stage it. I personally handle this little lady. Any more cracks out of those mugs and I wipe up the theater with them. She's quite good, of course. After all, she's a sort of professional, but I can't have anybody with her background in one of my productions. What ain't she got that you need? Culture, class, the unusual and interesting approach. Do you mean to stand there and tell me I ain't got class? Why, in Duluth, I was billed as the... You tell him, Mike. The classy chassis from Tallahassee. Truth is, she's from Brooklyn, but that don't rhyme with nothing. Very nice, Miss Carroll, but I'm afraid I can't use you. Next, please. Come on, hon. Culture, he says. The unusual approach. What the heck is that? If it means what I think it does, I should have pasted him one. Oh, face. Oh, hi, Nicky. Hi, Mike. How'd you make out with Hartman? No dice. Mm, that's tough, Mike. Hey, you're holding up the show, honey, and Sig's really blowing his top. Oh, gosh, I didn't know it was that late. Well, you run along, honey. I'll be with you in a second. Okay. Hey, Harold. Supposing you was me, see? 
You got a gal that's perfect in every way except, well, maybe she needs a little culture. How would you go about getting it for her? Culture? Ain't that what they put on flowers to make them grow? Make out like I never asked you anything. Yes, Mr. Hannigan. Oh, uh, take out the box of these chocolates. Yes, sir. That'll be 318, including tax. Which entitles you to a copy of a book today, free of charge. Uh, couldn't I have a pack of gum instead? Oh, no, sir. I'm sorry. But I'm sure you'll like the book. The author has a fine style, obviously a man of great culture. Oh, yes, so. You ever work for Hartman? I beg your pardon? Skip it. I'm afraid the author's monetary reward was very slight, but the critics were very ecstatic about his work. He received great acclaim. Yeah. Oh, he has an extraordinary style. Let me read you something from the book. The opening lines, in fact. The entire weight of the universe pressed down upon his tortured chest. A thousand fiery comets flashed before his bewildered eyes. The taste of degradation and disgrace were in his mouth. So that's culture, eh? Writing a book about a hangover. Hangover? and see the beautiful, exotic darlings of the chorus. Come in and see Frankie Porter, who makes with the shakes like she hadn't altered. Come in and feast your eyes on Cheetah Chula, the little lady from Brazil. See and hear Nicky Ricky, folks, the bashful baritone. And last but not least, folks, the star of our edifying little entertainment, dynamic doll face Carol. Red hot and beautiful That's what you are Red hot and beautiful With the charms I love and the glamour of a movie star With that come and kiss me Eh, she did? She killed him when she do a saucy number. A sailor lean over to watch him all close, and he fall right out of the balcony. Well, did you do something for him? Sure we did to put him on the front row. Oh. Too bad Dollface didn't get that job with Hartman, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it sure is. Because if she had, I could have taken her place down here, couldn't I? Well, you could do her numbers, maybe. Taking her place, that's something else again. Oh, I don't know. You tired, Frankie? Sort of. Too bad you don't like leaning on Nicky. He'd go for it. Hey, what you do? What are you dressing room? Curl up with that book. I don't feel like curling up with a book. Well, you will when you read it. One page, you look like a pretzel. It's full of culture. Has it got any pictures? 
When someone writes a cultured book, you don't need no pic... Someone writes a cultured book. Wait. You'll never miss it. There's enough in there you won't understand without it. And no pictures. Oh, shut up. Well, what is it? Baby, I've got it. I've got it. What? I'll tell you about it in the dressing room. Come Harry, Butch, come on, you're out. What, again? Yes, again. Get her in Can't you find some time for me, Frankie? Oh, maybe sometime I'll find some time. Something I learned while uh, browsing through the cyclopedia. Women in carpets, they're much better when you beat them regular. Chew on that for a while, chum. And that goes for you, too. Now, will you please tell me what this is all about? Honey, I got it. I got a gimmick that'll give you a build-up from coast to coast and back again. Why, it's an idea that comes once in a lifetime. Like marrying a guy with two heads, maybe? Oh, quit clowning, dog. Hartman wants culture. Okay, what's the most cultured thing you could do? I don't know. Read a book? Even more cultured than that. Beats me. Write a book. Look, baby, it's a natural. You write yourself a book. The critics rave about it, the public eats it up, Hartman hears about it, and what happens? Nothing, because I don't write no book. What would I write about for Pete's sake? You write about yourself, your life history, from the time you first came into this world a bare and helpless babe up until now. I'm in a rut. Everybody's doing it. They call them, uh, auto, uh, auto... Uh... Auto intoxication? No, 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 that ain't it. That's when you get drunk by yourself. Autobiography. Imagine it. A burlicue queen writing a biography about her life. Why, it's sensational. I even got the title. Genius de Milo. How does that hit you? Well, it ain't modest for a girl to claim she's a genius, is it? <laughs> modest, shamata, so long as you get the publicity. Writing a book's an awful tough job, Mike. I don't know when I'd find the time or the words. Oh, I've thought of all that. You don't write it yourself. You hire a ghost. A ghost that writes? They call them ghost writers. Guys that do all the work. You pay them and then sign your name to it. What do you say? Okay, Mike. Where do we dig up this ghost? You just leave everything to Papa. Okay, honey. On one condition. We'll let this ghost write all of it except one thing. On the page after the title, I want to write a little something. Want to know how it's going to read? Yeah, how? For the love of Mike. Mr. Girard's residence. Who should I say is calling? Hold on, please. Who is this, Orlo? The name is Hannigan, sir. He says that Mr. Bennett asked him to call you. Hello, Mr. Hannigan. <laughs> yes, I'm the guy who wrote The Stars Remain. Oh, it's a great book, Mr. Gerard. I can hardly lay it down. Uh, you, you might say I sort of tore through it. Say, Mr. Gerard, I got a proposition to make to you. Well, what kind of a proposition? A book about the theater, eh? Yes, I might be interested. In fact, I've been toying with the idea of doing a book about Doucet. No kidding. Bobo Doucet over at the Columbia? I was referring to Eleonora. I'm afraid I don't know the other performer. Don't you? Well, you ain't missed much. She hasn't got a thing on the doll. The doll? I don't follow you at all, Mr. Hennigan. Yes, perhaps you'd better explain it to me. Oh, the Gaiety Theater. Oh, where is the Gaiety Theater? Oh, I see. Very well, I'll, I'll be there. Are you going to do a new book, Mr. Girard? I think that was the idea behind that call. A most extraordinary character. By the way, Soho, do you know whether or not Eleonora had a sister named Bobo Duce? Really, I can't say, sir. Bobo sounds like it might be an Italian name. Yes, it does, doesn't it, sir? Oh, he said nine o'clock. Means you'll be here any minute now. Sounded real high class on the phone. You know, uh, kind of uh, sarcastic like. His publisher says he's a creative he... literary figure. It sounds like a drip to me. Oh, he sounds like a drip to you. Who asked you to put in your two cents? I put so my two cents because I love doll face, and I think the whole idea is crazy. Who will believe she writes a book? Everybody knows she quit school in the sixth grade. Now, Cheetah, that ain't kind. I did not quit. I was expelled. Because Pop beat up the principal. Mike, what does this author guy look like? I don't know, honey. I only talked to him on the phone. I bet he's one of those high brows with a long head and face like a sibisquit. You mean sea biscuit? That's what I said, sibisquit. Hello, Nick. Five minutes, doll. Okay, Nicky. I see you wearing your long face tonight, Nick. 
What's the matter, Frankie giving you the brush off again? Mm, yeah. Why don't you try socking her like I told you? I couldn't do that, Mike. Well, I couldn't lift a finger to her. Who said anything about lifting a finger? Never give her less than five. I wouldn't dare. Take it over, chum. If any gal two-time me the way Frankie does him, I think... Mike! You wouldn't have any ideas in your mind like that about me, would you? Nobody's come my way that's interested enough. But if someone should come along... <laughs> You'd what? I'd buy you a torch, honey. A great big flaming torch for you to carry. You know what I'd do with it? Give you a hot foot. Well, I guess I'd better go. Are you coming with me? No, I told that Gerard guy I'd meet him right here, so I'd better stick around. Oh, all right. Come on. You keep forgetting. Oh, well, I really didn't forget, but it just didn't seem to do too much good up at Hartman. Oh, I got that all figured out. I should have kicked you harder after all. He's way up on 48th Street. <laughs> Is it nice? What's on your mind, brother? Uh, I have an appointment with a Mr. Hannigan. My name is Gerard. Oh, yes. You'll find him in number 220. Thank Hey, are you looking for me? Hold it, Joe. Hi, Mike. Let's go. Oh, Frederick Manley Javon? That's right. I'm Mike Hannigan. Step in. Take a load off you, please. Oh. <laughs> Park the torso. Would you, uh... Mind explaining why you sent for me, Mr. Hannigan? Yes, sir. Right away. How's the, uh... Book writing racket paying off these days, Freddy. Getting any lettuce out of it? The uh, literary lettuce crop has been a bit thin this year, I'm afraid. Uh, kind of like I figured. Seeing as how they give you a book away for free if you spend three bucks or more. Oh, not that it ain't a great hunk of reading. It's what showed me that you're the boy we want. And uh, just what do you want? Well, like I said on the phone, how'd you like to do a book about show business? With the uh, emphasis, I gather, on the word show. Say, you catch quick. We want to do an autobiography on Dollface. You write it, she signs it. It's worth a grand to and uh, who is Dollface? Well, she's the star of this here theater. She's one of the most important personalities in Burlicue. Did you ever hear of Dollface? No, no, I haven't. In fact, this is uh, my first visit to a temple of, uh, what was your word, Burlicue? No kidding. Well, it's about time you come out and saw some good entertainment. Educational, too. Every Saturday night, the joint's full of college boys. Well, Freddie, what do you say? Is it a deal? <laughs> I don't think I'd be interested, Mr. Hannigan. I'm fond of uh, certain aspects of the theater, but uh, not this particular one. Some of the more esoteric performances perpetrated in the name of Thespis leave me a stranger to their perpetrations. You got something there, pal. Only I'd put it like this. It looks to me like you're letting a moisten play get the better of your Burmachan flatterers. You know, kind of like you're taking a salsamate attitude toward the quenching foil, and that's bad. Oh, that's very bad. What you should do is amalgamate the real brains. And uh, yeah. lambigate the faster past viewpoint in such a way that the mimsy odd grabs are slightly tovis. Is that what you're trying to get at? Well, what do you know? He makes with the double talk, too. Freddie, you're my boy. I'll make it two grand. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a lot of gravy, pal. A veritable mountain of coconuts, Mr. Hannigan, but I just don't happen to need the money. So it's non sample which is Latin for no soap. Thanks, Santa, this, honey. Did the horse kids come yet, Mike? Ixnay, I can cry. Meet the uh, eminent author, Mr. Gerard, huh? This is Dollface Carroll, Freddy. How do you do? That's Chi the Chula. How do you do? He won't do it. Said no. Even in Latin. Okay, Freddy, say hello and goodbye. Hello? Hello yourself. Why won't he do it? Not enough business? It's much more than I expected. Well, then what is it? Does he think he's too good for us? Not at all. Uh-oh. Better beat it, Freddy. How about saying I'll do it instead? You will? Change your mind, huh? And that great dolly changed his mind. So long as he don't change it back again. Oh, he won't. Don't worry about that. Well, we can get started right away, then. Gonna be a great book, huh? The possibilities are infinite. Infinite. Oh, that means he goes for it, doll. Infinite. Look, you stick around with me. See, I'll give you all the dope on it. Everything you need to know. As a writer, I found it's much more practical to do my research at first hand. Miss Carroll will be able to supply me with whatever data I require. Oh, fair enough. Of course, that means you'll have to tag around with her wherever she goes. I'll suit my time to hers. And uh, we start tomorrow morning? Yeah. Tomorrow morning at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at my place at the Plaza Terrace Hotel. Okay? 
Very well, I'll be there. All right. Mr. Hannigan, nice to see you. Mr. Gerard. Oh, Mr. Chill, I beg your pardon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks very much for coming down. Ah, well, there you are. You see, hun, it's all set. And just to show you how sure I was that everything was in the bag, I stopped over the jeweler on my way here and uh, picked up these. How do you like them? Oh, Mike, they're swell. But it's a little soon, isn't it? I thought you said we'd wait. Well, so we'll wait. How long can that be, anyway? Book started, you're on your way. What's wrong with buying the rings and being prepared? <laughs> ah, you hold them, honey. If I turn around, I might lose them. He changed his mind kind of quick, that writing ghost, didn't he? So he changed his mind. You know, the first chance I get, I'm going to have engraved inside of your ring, uh, she's just my doll. And inside of mine, he's just my mind. How's that sound? Want to know something? I'll bet you could have written that book yourself. Uh. Oh, oh, there you are. Hiya, hon. Ready? Oh. Gee, Hello. Ah, uh, it's really living, huh? Did you get started yet? Just about to. Well, what would you like to know? Everything, Miss Carroll, your complete history up until now. I want you to unveil your past, reveal your hopes, disclose your ambitions. She don't study show till 4 o'clock. What I want is an exact picture of your beginnings. Oh, she begin by getting born, huh? Why don't you stop making with the comedy relief? That ain't what he wants to know. As a matter of fact, it is. At any rate, when and where? When? I ain't telling. Brooklyn is where. On Kent Avenue, just a block from the brewery. Pop loved that neighborhood. Born in Murray Hill, just across from the J.P. Morgan Library. Don't you hear good, Mr. Gerard? It's all right, hon. I see what he's getting at. Murray Hill's got more class in Brooklyn. They won't like that in Brooklyn. Tell me about your parents, Miss Carroll. Well, Pop was a plumber. Father, an engineer. What sort of malarkey is this? I thought in books like this you told the truth about yourself. Hon, he's just putting more class and culture into it. Who wants to know about a plumber? People that stuff it up sinks. Oh, why don't you shut up? Oh, I told you before, I think the whole idea stinks. You are going to make Dollface full of a culture. What's wrong with that? Then you are going to give her to this Hartman. And after that, what happened? Without a Dollface, your own show go floozy, and we all lose our jobs. That I knew all along. But if it was going to help the doll, it was a risk I was willing to take. Oh, Mike, you're sweet. Oh, sure, sure. Sugar's my middle name. <laughs> What's the matter, honey? I never thought I'd know how it felt to be a mother. A mother? Yeah. I just gave birth to an idea. For heaven's sake, tell us. Oh, not now. Tonight, after the show, I want everybody to hear this. You know that little spot you were talking about on top of the world? Mm-hmm. I just signed a lease on it. Oh. Come on, sit down. Ah. Take it easy, will you? Hey, hey, quiet. Get us a little quiet here. Well, Mama, what's your big idea? You just sit down and make yourself comfortable. Now, you all know about the book that Mr. Gerard here is helping the doll to write, and you know why it's being written. Freddie, uh, could be that this book's going to be a hit, huh? Sell a lot of copies? Could be. Anyway, it'll make a lot of noise. Won't it? It's the first time that a Burlicue queen ever wrote a book, ain't it? I'm quite sure of that. Yeah, and that's what gave me my big idea. Instead of that book sending the doll to Broadway alone, we all go. Hubba, hubba, hubba! How do you mean, Mike? Question. Why give Hartman the benefit of all that publicity? Answer, we don't. We put on a Broadway show ourselves. Uh, yeah. money, sure it takes money, and here's how we get it. We all chip in. Now, how much you got? Maybe eight grand. Well, I can match that. Uh, how about you, Nick? Well, I can get it on the barbershop, and I've got a couple of songs I can contribute. Well, we'll uh, take your money, and we'll listen to your music. How much you got in a sack? Well, in the first national sacks, I got three grand. This is three grand. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. That's almost uh, 20 grand. We're practically all set. Well, kids, what do you think of it? You think I make good on Broadway, too? Oh, you're a cinch. You can't miss. You'll probably wind up being another Carmen Miranda. Carmen Miranda? That's one of her. tick 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 Bah. What has she got that I haven't got? What have you got to lose? My money. <laughs> well, I ain't heard from you, doll. It's a wonderful idea, Mike, but 20000 isn't nearly enough to put on a show. Oh, the rest I chisel. Chisel? In order to get that much dough, you'd have to have a whole tool chest. Uh. I don't see how we can do it. I really don't. Uh, could I make a suggestion? Sure. I like and I approve of this venture. I want to invest in it myself. Oh, you're in. How much? Well, whatever sum you require. Whatever... You mean it? Of course. And you got the dough? I have. Oh, that does it. That's wonderful. <laughs> you're not only writing the book and giving us the publicity, but you're putting up the money besides. Isn't he marvelous, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Tell you what. Let's all go out to a place and celebrate. Okay? Okay, let's go. Good. 
Hey, Mike. There is more to this book than you think, huh? Now, look, Twitchell. I'm giving this story to your paper exclusive. Dollface Carol, the queen of Burlicue, is writing an autobiography. That, uh, that's a book about her life. <laughs> While we in Burlesque have no message to offer you, we know that you like our sort of entertainment. Otherwise, you wouldn't come to see us in such enthusiastic numbers. End of chapter 21. Just one more to go. You getting tired listening? Mm -mm. Go ahead. Well, what's the matter? I was just thinking. The book's finished. The show goes into rehearsal soon. Looks as if our association is pretty near over. What are you talking about? You don't think we'd let you go after all you've done for us, do you? You won't? Well, of course not. Mike likes having you around. Oh, that's very nice of Mike. Chapter 22. There are those who scorn my vocation and speak of it in unflattering terms. They might take note that burlesque had its origin in the Commedia dell'art of the Renaissance. The comi... <laughs> the what? The Commedia dell'art, a popular form of entertainment from the 16th and 17th centuries. That particular theatrical form was originally devised by the ancient Greeks. <laughs> you mean the Greeks had a word for it? <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That goes into the script. I'll find a spot for that in chapter 15. You know, you've given me a lot of good ideas. Mike, are you ready to hear the song I wrote? Later. I want the doll to hear it. Let's tell him now. This gag will kill him. Hey, Mike, we got a brand new routine for you. Okay, fire away. Go ahead, ask me. I understand you have a new job. Yeah, down at the Eagle Lottery, but I don't think he'll take it. Why not? What, what do, do I, I know about, about washing eagles? eagles? It'll kill him, huh? <laughs> that gag was old when Joe Miller was in knee pants. Were you telling me the truth when you said that Mike Hannigan was the only man in your life? Mm -hmm. But he makes up for any of the others I might have missed. Well, uh, perhaps you haven't had the opportunity of choosing. I wish you wouldn't talk like that, Mr. Gerard. Why not? You know how I feel about you. You must know. Yeah, but it won't do you any good. I think you're the most charming woman I've ever met. The most provocative, the most alluring, the most enchanting. Balloony and salami and leave the host and pickle tripe. Help yourself. I am not hungry. Thank you. Well, uh, read it to her? Yes. How's the sound, huh? She feels that perhaps I've idealized her too much. Now, is that bad? Is that bad if he thinks she's one of the most charming dames he ever met? The most alluring and enchantful? Is that in the book? I don't know. I just read him between the lines. Well, I, I guess this finishes us up, doesn't it, Freddy? I mean, uh, you're through writing a book, and now it's time for me to give you the rest of your dough. That's right, isn't it? That's the way you want it? That's the way I want it. Okay, Freddy, and thanks. See you again, maybe. Wait a minute, Mike. This ain't quite the payoff. We have an appointment with Mr. Bennett tomorrow to read the book and make changes. Well, uh, you can call that off. Well, what do you mean, call it off? Because it ain't necessary to make any changes on account of it ain't necessary to have a book anymore. It ain't necessary? No. We've got all the publicity we need. It don't matter now whether the book comes out or not. Everybody's heard your name. Everybody knows we're rehearsing a show with you in it. But that's just the reason the book has to be published, because of the publicity it's had. I'm certainly not going to drop it now and look like a dope. Well, I'm kind of cold on the whole idea, and I'm calling it off. Well, you can call it right back on again, because I'm going through with it. We'd better go inside, Mr. Gerard. It's getting kind of chilly out here. Nikki, sing your song now. The door is here to listen. Here comes heaven again. Get that angel face. You don't need a halo or wings. You can do such fast. 
fabulous things With eyes that love me to dream Lips that say Bennett's office was on 52nd Street. He weekends at his Jamaica Bay place. Don't worry about getting back in time for your evening performance outside his Jamaica. Where in Jamaica? On a small island in the bay. You like it? It's very picturesque. Something on your mind? Mm hmm. Mike. He didn't even talk to me during the matinee. I think he's pretty sore. I, uh, I imagine he'll get over it. What can I do for you? Uh, where's Mr. Bennett's motorboat? Oh, a party of people set out from Mr. Bennett's place about 20 minutes ago. His boat won't be back for a half an hour anyway. Well, I'll never get back in time for the show if we have to hang around here. Can you run me one of your boats? That's what they're here for, mister. This will sound right. Come on. Be back in an hour. I'll pay you then. That's okay, mister. Nature, Miss Carol. I'd uh, call that a look of suspicion. Well, you didn't say nothing last night about our having to come all the way out here. Sure, you're not up to something. On my word, I wouldn't have the courage. Although, if I thought it would do any good, I might let the motor conk out and maroon us right here in the middle of the sound. <laughs> wouldn't help a bit. I can swim just like a fish who was taught by Johnny Weissmuller. <laughs> Very good timing, Mr. Gerard. I didn't do a thing. Well, what's wrong with it? I don't know. I'm no mechanic. Find time to tell me that. I uh, imagine we're out, out of, of gas. gas. And I forgot to bring my roller skate. Hello. Hello, operator. I want a Jamaica number. Yeah, 92521. Yeah, yeah, I'll wait. Honey, you like that dame ditching the show? Not the doll. She ain't here. She's got some good reason. Maybe Mr. Gerard dropped all his commas and they can't find them in the dark. Never mind why it's cracked. The doll would be here if she could. Remember that day she had a cold in the head? Yes. It's a funny place for her to have a cold in, but she came to the show, huh? Oh, shut up, shut up. Yeah. Will you? I'm trying to telephone. Hello. Hello, is this Mr. Bennett? Yeah, well, look, is Miss Carol there with Mr. Gerard? No, she isn't. And neither is he. I waited hours for them and I'm at the end of my patience. Well, uh, they left for your place. If, if they ain't there, something must have happened. How do you get to your joint? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. By water. Where, where would they get a boat? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. 
Well, maybe I better hop out to that landing and, and see if they got that far. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Bennett. What'd you find out, Mike? Nothing yet. I gotta get out there. You do the doll's numbers, unless she gets here before I get back. Okay, Mike. They won't like it out in front. I'll see you later. All right, girls, come on. Somebody's walking in my dream That's why I'm talking in my dreams Someone keeps buttoning When I start counting sheep Someone keeps cutting in and cutting off my sleeve Someone whose voice I recognize Gives out those confidential signs I may be crazy but as crazy as it seems Somebody's walking in my dreams And it's you, dear It's you who's walking Maybe they got lost in the fog. There weren't no fog when they started out. Didn't come up for two hours later. Could the boat have turned over? Uh, could have. How do you get all the Coast Guard? Phone in there. Not that they can do much on a night like this with all the fog. Oh! Look, you've been yelling hello for two hours. It's about time you got an answer. I have a bad connection. You know, I don't like this at all. We're liable to drift out to sea in this fog. Great. You're worried. All I can think about is how Mike must feel. The poor guy, he probably thinks I'm... Look, Mr. Gerard, I've got to get to a phone. Listen. Sounds like the surf out there. Well, then we can't be far from land. No. And the water isn't a bit cold. You going to swim to shore? I'm going to get to a phone before Mike goes crazy. Well, I can't let you go alone. I'll make the trip with you. Gosh, if I lose Mike's ring, he'll be off me for good. Here, keep it for me, will you? Sure. I better take this along with us. She'll probably need it. Miss Carroll, do you always go swimming with your top hat on? Only during the opera season.
been down this coast since sunrise, and there's not a sign of them. Nothing could have happened to them. If they had, we'd have found the boat. Then where are they? Beats me, mister. One thing's sure, they're not in that bay. Hey, Jack, let me take those binoculars. Hmm. What do you see? There's a boat beached in a cove over there about a mile away. Can't make out the number, but she sure looks like one of mine. Well, doesn't seem to be anybody in it. Joe, head for that cove! Oh, this empty. Maybe they went to swimming. Let's look up and down the beach. He wakes up telling me he owes me ten bucks for the boat. Don't do that. I can explain everything. It's it's quite innocent. Just uh, babes in the wood. Actually, you, you've hit it right on the nose. Uh, Miss Carroll, Miss Carroll, wake up. We've been rescued. Miss Miss Carroll. Don't you think you ought to call her by her first name? Miss Miss Carroll. Oh, what time is it? Time to get up. Mike. Mike, gee, I'm glad to see you. We had the awfulest time. The boat ran out of gas. We got into a lot of fog, and we had to swim to this awful place. Honey, how did you ever find us? I found you very comfy and cozy. Oh, now, Mike, you're still not mad about the other night, are you? Honey, that didn't mean a thing. No, of course not. I guess this don't mean a thing either. Oh, be sensible, will you? I told you what happened. The motor conked out. We had to leave the boat and swim here. How did that get here? Uh, must have drifted in with the tide. Yeah. Stop looking at me like that, Mike, will you? That's just what happened. We didn't come here in the boat. We couldn't because it ran out of gas. I, I guess I just don't know enough about boats. That's what I thought it was. It's the truth, Miss Hannigan. It certainly is. And after that, we had to swim all the way to this, this awful wilderness. Now, listen, Hannigan, there wasn't a soul around. There was nothing to do but spend the night here and hope that someone would find us in the morning. We were cold and wet and completely miserable. Yeah. yeah and I suppose you put my ring on to keep your hand warm. You're wrong, Hannigan. So, Cheetah was right. She wasn't just talking. The most enchanting, the most alluring, the most provocative dame. He gave you that line and you fell for it. No, Mike. Any other dame in the world I could have believed it of. This, this I had to see with my own eyes. Okay, you're stuck with her, mister, and you can have her. I wish you all the luck in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I wish you all the good luck. <coughs> Gesundheit to both of you. Mike! Mike! Tonight. Sitting on their hands like they was afraid somebody was going to steal them. Well, there just ain't enough people out there to make any noise, that's all. Oh, I suppose you're going to say I can't draw them in like the doll did. Frankie, I oh, ain't Frankie. saying a thing. Nicky. We're closing Saturday. Why, that's only four days from now. Mike's got to give us two weeks' notice. 
Yeah, we've had two months' notice when you come to think of it. Ever since the doll left, it's been like this. No customers, no dough coming in. We ought to thank Mike for carrying us this long. Yeah, it's been pretty rough on him. I'm sorry, kids. I'd like to keep her going, but, well, no can do. Oh, uh, we understand, Mike. Well, I don't understand. Our contract says you gotta give us two weeks' notice. If you'd paid attention to business instead of carrying a torch for that, that no-good doll face. Shut big trap of yours. How dare you talk to me like I that? I said shut up. I was only sticking up for my rights. You'll not only get your rights, but a couple left if you don't button that face of yours. Now go to your dressing room and make your change. Yes, Nikki. Mike, it works. <laughs> like I told you, Nikki, that's a way to handle women. Treat them rough. Uh, some of them, anyway. How's that torch you were cutting? Still burning bright? Sorry. Didn't know you were in here. Should have knocked, I guess. Maybe it's burning your fingers by now. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't seem able to drop it. You seeing much of her? A little. She's okay. Sure, she's fine. What's she doing with herself these days? Oh, having fun. She and that writing ghost. Yeah, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Why not? You gave her away to him, didn't you? Didn't have to. It was already that way. Mike Shenigan, you are one stupid man. If you believe for one minute that Dollface ever thought of anyone but you. You're the one who put the idea in my head. You kept needling me that he was after her. And he, why not? She's a beautiful girl. But that don't mean that she wants him. Well, I love diamond bracelets, but so far I never met one who think I'm the type. Funny thing, isn't it? I started the whole thing. The book. And Gerard to write it. Slap me in the face. You slapped your own face. And you deserve it, too. Oh, look, Mike. Don't you go to her and say you were sorry. Or write her or telephone her. Huh? Telephone company declared an extra dividend on the nickels I've spent trying to get her. Not at home, not at home, they say on the switchboard. And I don't know what she's reading these days, but it ain't my letters. They all come back unopened. How's the book? Good. The newspapers and the public like it very much. Yes, so I heard. She dedicated to it. That's really the payoff, ain't it? Not quite. There is more. I'll face them to give them back to you. I thought you needed a ring since you disposed of those you had. Wear it a while. Break it in. It doesn't have to mean anything. It's just something to make your pretty hand prettier. If you decide that you like it and you want to keep it permanently, it'll be very fine. If not, why, well, just come to me one day and say, I'm sorry, Fred, this isn't my size and doesn't seem to suit my type. I'll understand. I think you're one of the nicest guys I ever met, Fred. That must be Hartman. I think he'll make his entrance calling on all fours. Come in, Mr. Harvin. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Girl. Good evening. I hope you remember me. I'm the man who said you didn't have any class. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember you, Mr. Harvin. And I'm also a man who should have his head examined. Not that it would do any good, because the doctors wouldn't find anything in it. I've come to make you a proposal. Will you listen to it, or would you rather I get out of here? Proposals are in the air today. I think she was. Ooh, congratulations. Won't you sit down? Possibly Mr. Gerard has told you I'm here. I understand your show Park Avenue closed on its tryout in Philadelphia. Yes, it ran for one consecutive performance. A record. Now, here's my situation. I have the Belmont Theater under lease and no show to put into it. I want you as my star if we can find a musical play in a hurry. You know of anything? Well, I... Why not dramatize the genius tomorrow? Why didn't I think of that? Of course, it would be easy to do. 
We could use most of the incidents from the book and many of the songs and specialties mentioned there. Wonderful. We wouldn't have to worry a bit about the cast. The gaiety's closed, and we could use the same people who supported me there. They're all in the book, if you remember. Not another word. I'm sold. They all have a lot of talent, Mr. Hartman. But there's one thing I think you should know. They don't have much culture. Well, in that case, we're a hit right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you're just my sign. Mister, how you look to blubber with that knocked out squawk. Seems your lips are made of rubber every time you talk. Oh, no, no, no. Hubba, hubba. Yes, yes, yes. Hubba, hubba. Mop, mop, mop. Hubba, hubba. Oh, what you know? What you know? Oh, what you say? Oh, what you say? I say I'll dig you, you later, baby, baby, in the, in the USA. USA. Much better, kids. It's coming along fine. All right. Take your places for the next number. Snap it up. Come on, show some life. Looks pretty good so far, huh? Hmm? Yes, very nice. What's the matter with Dollface, Cheetah? I came back here to say hello and she practically bit my head off. Oh, you know how it is. Those last week's of rehearsals make everybody jump. Even me. I'm so nervous and forgetful last night I take a bath with my girdle on. This morning, three ways stretched. Have you seen Hannigan lately? Oh, I saw him the other night. Did he ask about Dollface? Just ask one thing. Is she happy? Is she? 
It seemed to me you should know that better than me, Mr. Gerard. All right, let's go. What's the next scene? In front of the dance hall. It's where Miss Carroll first meets Hannigan. Oh, yes. Get that angel face You don't need a halo of wings You can do such fabulous things With eyes that love me to dream Lips that say, say when You walk by And everybody starts to sigh Here comes heaven You're a wonderful dancer. I suppose you noticed me looking at you in there. I never noticed strange men looking at me. My mother told me not to. What'd your father tell you? He always agrees with it. Poor guy. I want to hop a cab. Can I give you a lift? Uh, no, thank you. I have my private driver waiting. His name is Brooklyn Rapid Transit. Mine is Michael Francis Hannigan. What do they call you, sister? They don't call me sister. I don't, as a rule, give my name to strange men. But... I got it. A name that fits you like a glove. Dollface. Dollface? That's it, Dollface. That's what I'm going to call you. What a name for show business. Show business? What are you talking about? I sell entertainment at the Gaiety on 14. Of course, it's barbecue, but it's living. If you can dance on the stage, like you did in there, it's worth 30 bucks a week to me. You mean you're offering me a job? That's it. If you can sing, I'll make it 40 bucks, maybe. That sounds like all the money in the world, Mr. Hannigan. Mike, too. Okay, Mike. Here comes heaven again. Get that angel thing. like that scene. Why, that's one of the best scenes in the whole show. Well, I don't think so. I don't like it, and I won't do it. I think we should cut out the part of Mike Hannigan. I don't see why we need him in the show at all. We have enough without him. Miss Carroll, you're absolutely wrong. All of your scenes with him are wonderful. He's our love interest. Well, I don't care. We don't need any love interest. Dollface. Dollface. Who is it? It's Fred. Can I talk to you? No, you can't. Go away. I don't want to talk to anybody. Leave me alone, please. Chico, Chico, Puerto Rico. 
wolf who comes from Hollywood and she's gone. Mike, this is Chita. Listen, you meet him at Dolphy's Hotel in about a half an hour. Never mind what it's all about. I tell you later. You'll be there, you hear? Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Like I've been telling you, if she don't want my character in a play, it's a sin she don't want to see me. Her whole attitude shows that she's through with me. Oh, a lot you know about women. Well, I know the doll. Well, I thought I did. She is finished with this Gerard, and I'm sure of that. She would not let him go into a dressing room. Well, a woman is a man, no? And if she finishes with him, then the only other one is you. And you are a man, yes? Well, according to the last census. Mm. I've got my fingers crossed. I wish someone like you come to call on me. You know, Juliet, you come knocking at my door? Wolves? And Milkman, he's a wolf, too. Oh, hold it, Cheetah. You go ahead, and if she says okay, sing out, and then I'll come in. But, Mike, it's so silly to come to this far. Well, let's do it my way, huh? I'd rather. Okay. Who is it? It's me, Cheetah. Hello, dear. Hello. Doll. Gee, it's good to see you, now, baby. Now, look, Mike, you've said just about all I ever want to hear from you. You said it all that morning on the beach when you called me a cheat and a liar and a two-timer. You said it very plainly then, and there's nothing else you can add to it now. I wanted to see you. Oh, but it... you did see me there in the cove. You saw me with your own eyes, you said. And that's why you told Mr. Gerard that he was stuck with me. Well, he likes being stuck with me. And I like it that way, too. Now, go away. I never want to see you again. Oh, Doll, please, listen, you... Oh, Mike, I'm sorry. She told me she had given back Gerard's ring, and I thought it would be a cinch for you to make a clinch. She's wonderful, ain't she? That Mick temper. I guess that's one of the reasons I'm so crazy about her. Oh, Mike, if she'll let you talk to her. Yeah. There was only some way I could make her listen. It... She will, Cheetah. She will? Yes, she will. She'll talk to me. We're going to have a nice, long conversation. Yes, Mike. Whether she likes it or not. If it's the last thing I ever do, Miss Dollface Carroll is going to have a little talk with Michael Francis Hannigan. Yes, Mike. Sure, sure. Chico, he no speak Americano. 
you want to add it, then he will say, of course, but don't go ahead, say he no got the board. Chico Chico, from Puerto Rico, he made three Luenu are dancing Chico Chico. But when you know all that I know, maybe you'll give Chico back to Puerto Rico. Arbolero. He do better job than says the Romero. He like to flirt, but he no fight a duel. No. He might get hurt. Say he's nobody's no fool. fool. Chico Chico from Puerto Rico. He's a wolf who came from Hollywood and Pico. And then you know all that I know. Maybe you'll give Chico back to Puerto Rico. Ladies and gentlemen, we must ask your indulgence for just a little while. Something has happened backstage. Well, you know how it is on first nights. We'll go on with the show in just a few moments, so please don't be impatient. In the meantime, the orchestra will play. But you can't stop the show now. This is opening night. We got a full house. I can't go out there and tell those people to go home and give them their money back. I'm sorry, Mr. Hartman. The audience can see all of the show except Miss Carroll. My client's injunction says Miss Carroll can't appear. So she can't. That's just like Mike Hannigan. He would do a thing like this. Why didn't you tell me you had a contract with him? Well, it was such an old contract, I'd completely forgotten about it. If only you'd told me, I could have talked him out of it or bought it from him or something. Mr. Hartman? Did you get a hold of Hannigan? No, sir, we didn't. I phoned him every place, at his apartment, at the gaiety. He doesn't seem to be any place we've contacted. We'll try again. Put out a call for him over the radio. We've got to get him to call off this injunction. If we don't, I'm a ruined man. Yes, yes sir. sir. We'll try. Too bad about Dollface not being able to go on, isn't it, dear? Yes, it is. Michael, oh, make a move now. I'll open for you, honey. Where is she? She's in the dressing room. My. They all go crazy. Think she's crazy enough to talk to me? I think so, now. Where was he? He was here all the time playing mouse and get. Let her go on, just for tonight. I can't do a thing until you contact my client. I wish you could find Mr. Hannigan. There were a few things I'd like to say to him. 
Okay, go ahead. And again, we've been looking all over for you. That's all I've been trying to get you to do for two months. For heaven's sake, call off your copper. You're ruining me. What do you want, anyway? Not much. Just a little schmooze with Miss Carroll. Schmooze? Talk. All you want is to talk to her? Well, go ahead, talk to him. Schmooze with him. Anything, only let's get on with the show. He made his curtain speech a couple of months ago. Since then, we've had nothing to say to each other. Miss Carroll, please, there's an audience out there waiting for you. Don't be obstinate. Don't let your personal feelings hold up our show. Oh, all right. But make it snappy. What do you want to say to me? I'd like to talk to Miss Carroll alone. Go ahead. The day after it happened, I called you up. You wouldn't talk to me. I lay awake all night, thinking about things. I got to thinking about how I first met you, when you joined my show, and how, after a time, we, we get to liking each other. Things like that. Lying awake, thinking of things like that, I, I knew that I was all wrong. I'd made a big mistake. That's why I phoned you in the morning, about a dozen times after the same day. They said you were out. I knew you wasn't. But I knew how you felt. Well, I guess I couldn't blame you for not wanting to talk to me. That night I wrote your letter. In it, I said what I was going to say if I'd have talked to you on the phone. That I was a fool. That I blew my top. And I was awful sorry. After that, I wrote you a lot of letters. You know that. You know what happened to them. They all came back marked unopened. I even hung around your hotel in hopes that I could catch you, but well, I must have warned you that I was there and you ducked out the back way. What's all this leading up to? Just one thing. You don't have to worry about answering your phone from now on. And there won't be any more letters. All right. I'm going away. Where? No, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. Someplace. Just far enough away so that you won't be scared that I'd body anymore. Is this what you wanted to tell me? One thing more. Meeting you has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Knowing you all these years has been wonderful. I hope that you're going to be very happy and that you have lots and lots of success. You know that, at least, on top of the world that I was talking about, remember? I'm putting on your name now. Ferguson. Yeah, I'm calling it off. Oh, you can't do that. We'll have to get a release first. All right, get a release then. Well, I'll have to call Judge Littlefield. So call Judge Littlefield. I won't be needing this anymore. No, Mike. Here, give it to me. You stay put. Well? I can't do a thing with him. Of all the obstinate guys I ever met in my whole life, he really takes the cake. What's the matter now? Well, he won't let me go on unless you give him a 25% interest in the show in return for my contract. 25%? A robber, ain't he? A second diligence. 25%. Look, Hannigan, 25%. Are you crazy? This show cost me 100000 to put on. I should give you a quarter interest just because you got me by the throat. I'll give you 10% and not a nickel more. 10%? Or at 15. 15%. Oh, you don't know him very well, Mr. Hartman. He's liable to go up to a half interest if you don't look out. A half interest? And something else I forgot to tell you. He insists that the billing meet Mike Hannigan and Flo Hartman present. His name above mine? Look, Hannigan, a quarter interest I might let you chisel from me, but Flo Hartman's name goes above any others in the billing. That must be understood. Oh, well. Oh, well, I, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, uh, let's see how it sounds. Um, Hartman and Hannigan present... Uh, no. Hannigan and Hartman present. Oh, that reads better. Flo, you I'm not asking you to read. I'm asking you to come to your senses and let the show go on. Oh, yes. Yeah, we mustn't do anything to hold up our show, must we? Well, come on, doll. Just, just stand there. People are waiting for you. You're on. No, it's understood, isn't it? Hartman and Hannigan present. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that part. We'll argue about it later. Hey, now, look here, Hannigan. Okay, okay, I'll give you a break. It's Hartman and Hannigan present Miss Dollface Carol. Well, there's your music. You keep forgetting. Oh, 
Gesundheit. You know, Flo, I did a lot of good things down on 14th Street. I'm sure you did, Mike. Yeah, but this is by far the best show I ever put on. It certainly is. Huh? Somebody's walking in my dream. That's why you're talking in your dream. But as crazy as it seems. A hubba hubba hubba. He's no square. Well, a hubba hubba hubba. But a pair, will you love and will you honor and obey? Yeah, and every time I see him, I'll just say, He'll come heaven again. Yeah. Hey.